Hi everyone and uh, welcome to COM317 Stay at Home Class Edition. I've got a short slide deck for you here with some tips and instructions on project for the video, which is what we're going to get started on now. Uh, this, this project is due on April 22nd. Now, planning, shooting, and editing a video, even a short video, which is what most of you are going to do, it's a time-consuming process. It takes a lot of work, a lot of planning, um, and that's especially true if you're new to the process of, of doing video work. So where to start? Um, think back to that quote on the previous slide from Lauren Morelli. Write about something you love. Uh, have an idea about something that you're passionate about. What's the video you've always wanted to do? There are probably some ideas back there. Um, explore those. Figure out ways to adapt them in the current environment, uh, but really work on something that you're passionate about because this is going to take a lot of time. Uh, it, it's going to be a lot more interesting to you if you're really interested in the subject that you are that you're filming. Okay, put your ideas together, brainstorm about those things that you're interested in, things you've always wanted to do with video, and then try to figure out how you can put these together into some kind of a narrative. And even news stories have narratives. Even recipes have narratives. Think about how you do this as telling a story. In the uh, project instructions PDF that you can find on, on Titanium in about three or four different places, there's one under this week's, uh, under this week's heading. We call this the, um, the tell or the sell video. And the tell, uh, you know, could be something like a news story, feature story, mini documentary. Um, it could be a how-to video, but but these would be videos that are focused more on uh, more on relaying some information that that people will find useful. Right. The sell video is more persuasive. And so the obvious example of that would be a commercial. I've had a lot of students do commercials for this particular video. Um, I think I mentioned in class, you might think of doing a trailer for your B-movie poster. Uh, that could be a sell video. Influencer videos are certainly uh, sell videos, such as like product endorsements and product reviews and things like that. Advocacy videos. These could be political, social causes, uh, about anything that you feel strongly about that you would like to uh, help persuade people to, uh, to maybe think a little bit differently about a particular issue. The bottom line is I interpret tell or sell pretty broadly. Um, anything that's entertaining probably has some aspects of tell or sell. So the way I approach this assignment is it's pretty wide open. If you've got an idea that you think, wow, this really doesn't fit tell or sell at all, um, you can probably go with it. Maybe shoot me an email if you if you just want to run it past me, but um, I interpret this pretty broadly. I want you to do something that, that you think is going to be fun and interesting because, like I said, you're going to spend a lot of time on this. Okay, now what's doable? Now this is always a question. Uh, when you're getting ready to do like a, a video project and you haven't done any of these before. I mean, you, you, you can't always um, get a, a great big crowd scene to together. You don't have the budget to do epic scenes and drone shots and things like that. Uh, so you're always trying to figure out what's doable. Obviously, with this particular assignment at this time, you're going to be doing most, if not all, of the assignment while a stay-at-home order is, is in effect. And so you're going to have to think even more strongly about what you can actually do and how to make some adjustments and things like that. You may need to do most or all of the shooting for this inside. If you need outside shots and you can't get them, maybe you have some still photos that you can use. I will let you use some stock photos or photos that you find on the internet if you need an establishing shot and you can't get there to get it and things like that. Uh, we'll work with you on that kind of stuff. Um, but be prepared that you're probably going to be doing most of your shooting for this inside. So that may affect the ideas in terms of what's doable, what kind of things you can actually produce for this assignment. You may not have access to people, or at least very many people. You may have your immediate family members or roommates or, or people that you're close to, but um, 
you may not have access to a lot of people. And so try to be persuasive and get, uh, get your family members to, uh, to agree to be talent in this um, or figure out substitutes. You could do the video from the point of view of your dog or your cat or something like that. Pets are hard to film, uh, but you could have some pretty interesting videos that way. I've had students do those before and they've, they've turned out pretty well. Be creative in your ideas. Um, just different ideas come up during hard times. Um, times of, uh, times of, of stress are often a, a good place to, uh, uh, to think creatively and, and to come up with, with new and different ideas. Be prepared to improvise. Okay, so say for instance you wanted to do a video uh, about mountain biking and your video was going to show, you know, some tricks and some of the different uh, uh, trails that you've been on and things like that. Obviously you can't do that right now because all the trails are closed. Perhaps you could do something about mountain biking that maybe is, is showing how to change the brakes on a mountain bike. And then you could incorporate existing photos and video that you've already taken uh, as transitions and, and things like that to show the importance of why you need good breaks. Perhaps you wanted to do something about Disneyland. You're a big fan of Disney and you wanted to uh, do a tour there of Disney. Disneyland's closed, right? So perhaps you could do some research on a particular Disney production or a Disney character and incorporate still photos that you find from the internet along with voiceover and live action footage of some um, Disney character from that production that you happen to have, have in your home. You know, improvise. Like all your other major assignments this semester, this assignment is worth 100 points. It's broken down into three steps. The first step is the big idea. That's worth 15 points. That's due April 8th. The second step is your storyboard and script. That's worth 25 points, and that's due on April 15th. The third step is your finished video, um, and that's worth 60 points and due on April 22nd. We'll go through all these steps in a little bit more detail on the, on the following slides here. The first step, the big idea. This is the easiest stage of the project in terms of any technical production. All you're gonna do is write this in a Word document, save it as a PDF and upload it. Um, but obviously it's, it's a pretty important step. This is coming up with the idea, uh, describing it in a way that sells it to me. You know, think, think of me as, as the person who would be deciding whether this gets to be produced or not. You need to sell your idea to me. Um, and more importantly than selling it to me, I want you to convince me that you've thought this all the way through. So write this about 200 words long. Um, convince me that this is a really good idea for a video. You're excited about it. Make me excited about watching it. Convince me that you've thought it through from the beginning to the end. You kind of know where you're starting. You know where um, kind of the big moments are. You kind of know how this is going to play out. You know your, your story. You know how it's going to end. You know the mood you want to create and things of that nature. Convince me this is something that people would actually like to watch. That if this came up uh, as a related video while they're, uh, while they're watching stuff on YouTube, they'd think, hmm, Maybe I'll actually watch that. That's what I want from the big idea. The takeaway here is you want, I want you to show me that you have thought through the narrative structure. From a production standpoint, like I said, nothing fancy, write it up, save it as a PDF, upload it to Titanium. The storyboard and script stage, the second step of this project, um, I can't emphasize enough how important this is, uh, especially if you've not done much video work. Um, the, the more detailed your storyboard is, the better your shooting's going to go. Putting together a good storyboard takes some time, uh, as we're going to get into the kind of the details that you'll put into the storyboard on, on the next slide. Um, but believe me, you will recoup that time over and over when it comes to your shooting time 
and your editing time if you have a good detailed storyboard to start with. Change your scenes frequently. This helps keep the video visually interesting. Um, whether Even in documentaries that have, often have a slow pace, they're going to change scenes quite frequently. 10 seconds is a really, really long scene. In, in most uh, commercials, there is a cut. Even if it's a longer scene that has, uh, that maybe runs seven or eight seconds, there are often two or three cuts within that scene just to change the visual angle. So think in terms of short scenes uh, and lots of them. That makes it actually easier to film and edit and put things together. Now, in terms of the storyboard and script, I've put a template on Titanium that you can use. It's a Word document uh, that's under the uh, Step 2 um, area, where you can use that storyboard template if you like, and it is divided up into your audio and your video sections, production notes at the beginning, things of that nature. Um, if you have used other storyboard templates and you want to use, use that or you want to use something else that you find on, on the internet, that's fine. I, I don't care so much about the template uh, as much as I um, care about the content of what's in there. So what should go into your storyboard and script? You should have some production notes at the beginning, which is kind of your basic um, list of ingredients if this was a recipe. Uh, this, this is all the stuff that you need to have on hand for your shooting. It describes what your talent's like, it describes what the settings are like, it describes what your props are like, things of that nature. In terms of the scenes in the storyboard, you're going to include video directions and audio directions. The video directions should include what type of shot each shot is. You can use the, the abbreviations or, or just write it out. Either is fine, but things like close-up, medium close-up, long shot, establishing shot, um, extreme close-up, those kinds of things. You'll want to indicate that for each scene. You'll want to indicate the transition of how you got into that scene. So your first one is usually open on or fade in or something like that. Most of your transitions are likely to be cuts or dissolves. Dissolves, we use those to kind of slow the pacing down, make it a smoother, softer um, kind of scene transition. If slowing it down is not important to you, just go with cuts. That's, that really is kind of the default scene transition. Um, beyond cuts and dissolves, uh, and there are different kinds of dissolves as far as like putting it on the end to fade out or fade in, things like that. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't look into too many funky scene transitions. Mostly they're distracting uh, rather than, than helpful. But include your shot type, your scene transition, and then a brief written description of what's happening in the scene, what kind of camera movements there are, if any. In many cases there won't be a camera movement, but you might have a dolly or a truck or a, or a pan shot, or maybe the camera's just kind of moving around a little bit to, um, to get uh, a different perspective on the face of the, uh, of the speaker or something like that. And then include the length of the scene in seconds. For the audio directions, you should include uh, any music, any secondary audio track, uh, music or sound effects, um, and what, what it's doing in there. So if the music has been playing all along, you could just put in parentheses, music continues. Um, if you've got a voiceover or talent that, is, that are going to be speaking during that scene and you need to take the secondary audio track down, in other words, you need to fade the music out so that the, uh, or at least fade it down so that the talent can be heard, then indicate that, that, that there will be a fade in or out of the secondary audio track. Um, in terms of any spoken words, uh, include the script of any on-camera dialogue or the voiceover uh, in, your, in your audio directions for, for each scene as well. And then the last part of the storyboard is draw rough sketches of what's happening in the scene or kind of the key moment within that scene. You don't have to be a good artist to do this. Pencil sketches are absolutely fine. Um, they don't have to be super detailed, uh, but what they should be is to scale. So if you look at that uh, storyboard sketch in the lower right corner of the slide there, that bottom right one, you can tell that's a close-up. 
we see the head and just the top of the shoulders. And the importance of that is when you go to do shooting, you're often going to forget to get close enough. You're going to forget exactly how close or how far away you need to be on that camera angle because you've got a hundred things in mind when you're trying to do the shooting. Having the the sketch drawn to perspective in the storyboard, which you look at right before you do the shot, that will remind you to get the right, uh, the, the right focal distance. For step three, uh, the finished video, I would like you to include as graphics in your video uh, the title of the video, uh, your name and some credits or something else like that. Uh, that doesn't have to be at the beginning. You can put it. Uh, you can put it at the end of uh, if you want. You can have music playing, things like that. Um, on the uh, assignment instructions that I have on Titanium, it talks about a green screen intro. That was going to be part of a lab that we were going to do. Uh, actually, I think we were going to do it this week or or, or uh, next week. We're not going to do the green screen lab, so you do not need to do a green screen intro. Uh, if you have access to a green screen and you want to do them, they're kind of fun, but, but we're not going to do that lab and, and I'm not going to have you do a green screen intro for your, uh, for your video. You do need to include at least one additional audio track besides the audio that you record the video with. You have to have at least one secondary audio track that you include uh, in your video somewhere. That's so that you have some experience working with the different sound levels and, and coordinating how you work with, with multiple audio tracks. Usually that audio track is music, um, could also be sound effects and things like that, but you do need to include at least one additional audio track. When you're finished with all the editing, you're going to export this as an MP4. And in your export um, pull-down menu, you don't actually see MP4, I don't believe, unless that's new in 2020. Uh, what you're going to see is the H.264. We have a video on Titanium that goes through the export uh, instructions. Uh, make sure that you have, have looked at that. Do not send me uh, or upload to Titanium, uh, your native Premiere Project for, uh, file. Uh, the only way that's any good to me is if you send me the entire folder of all of the video clips and all the audio and all the graphics and all that kind of stuff. The Premiere Project file is really just a shell. So if you send me, um, if you send me, email me your Premiere Project for, file, you'll look, if you look at the file size, they're in the kilobytes, not megabytes or gigabytes, which is really what you're going to be working with in, in total on this. So the Premiere Project file, that's just kind of a, a container, really. Do watch the video tutorial on exporting uh, to reduce the file size. In most cases, your, your videos are going to go over 100 megabytes, which takes it beyond what you can upload to Titanium, or at least there'll be 100 megabytes or more if you if you keep it as a um, high definition. And so that video tutorial takes you through some different options as far as uh, lower quality resolution or also um, uh, reducing the size, reducing the uh, um, the width by height pixels, so that you've got a smaller smaller video and therefore a smaller file size. Okay, some tips for uh, doing this kind of video shooting while you're likely at home. First, remember to get in close. Um, a lot of times when, when you're in an indoor environment, people don't necessarily think about the focal distance as much because you feel like you're closer to everybody. Um, you still need to get in close, follow your storyboards. The other thing about getting in close is uh, with indoor shooting is that often your lighting is just not going to be as good as it is outside. And so getting close up um, puts more detail, more light on the faces of your subjects. Do pay attention to your lighting and do what you can. Um, most of you don't have studio lights or three-point lighting that you can easily set up and things like that and get a whole bunch of light flooded into the room where you're going to be doing the shooting. That said, be conscious of your lighting. Um, don't be shooting with your subject standing in front of a, of a big window where they're going to be backlit and, and their face is going to be in shadows or even in silhouette. You know, pay attention to that kind of stuff. You'll notice it probably more 
when you look through the camera than you will if you're just, uh, just looking at them directly. Um, move lamps around, get as much light on the subject as you can. Uh, you're probably going to have shadows if you're just moving lamps around and, and, and that's okay. We're, gonna, we're not going to worry too much about shadows on this. But we do want to be able to see the faces and the subjects that you're actually shooting. So, so do pay attention to lighting and you will probably have to do some rearranging of lights and furniture and stuff in your house to do that. Try to get rid of background distractions. I see this all the time in, in videos that, that people shoot in their homes. And I think the reason is a lot of these background distractions, just, just little bits of messes and things like that, you may not notice them because they're all, always there. Um, but they are distracting uh, when, the, when they're in the video. So do kind of take a, a survey of the room that you're going to be shooting in and, and just think about, well, what's going to be distracting to the audience if it appears in there? What looks good in the background? What doesn't? Just take a little time and plan that out. Shoot faces, uh, not backs. So a lot of times, let's say you're doing a... Um, a recipe video, uh, you know, so you've got cooking. It can get really boring if all we're doing are over the shoulder shots of the stove and we see the shoulder of the person who's doing the cooking, but we're not actually seeing their face. Um, figure out some ways around that. Now, obviously, you may not be able to stand behind the stove because the stove is against the wall. So get creative. Maybe you have to actually lie on the counter and hold the camera over the stove so that you can shoot up and see the face of the person who's cooking at least once in a while. Maybe you have need to have the person who's doing the cooking moving around in the kitchen and stopping and turning around and looking at the camera. Get the faces in there. Same way if you're um, you know shooting somebody during their daily routine, they go into the bathroom to brush their teeth, uh, and all you're seeing is their back and a little bit of a toothbrush moving on the side. Not very interesting. You also have mirrors to think about in the background, in the background when you're in the back bathroom. So uh, think about all these kinds of things and really put some effort into composing your shots so that we see your subjects. Shoot horizontal, not vertical. So your, most of your smartphones will allow you to shoot vertical, horizontal, square for social media, uh, all that's fine, but for this assignment, all your shots should be horizontal. If you make a mistake and you've got a key vertical shot and you can't get back out to do it, um, it it's just going to look kind of distracting. Yes, you can do some cropping and scaling of your vertical shots and try to make them, uh, make them fit a horizontal scene in a, when you're in, editing in Premiere Pro, but usually it doesn't look very good. So just remember to shoot horizontal, not vertical. And improvise. You're going to have to, to, uh, to make do uh, and get creative with some things. So uh, have some fun with it, and, and I think there'll be some pretty good projects. And last, um, email me if you can, sometime during spring break or before the end of spring break, a one sentence that kind of explains your topic idea for, for your video. Uh, send that to rmeads at fullerton.edu. And what I'll do is, once I get uh, several emails from you, I'll, I'll try to incorporate some of those topics and, and maybe think about some potential problems that you might run into, uh, incorporate that into our content for uh, the week's session when we get back from spring break. Uh, other than that, have a good spring break. Um, try to get some work done on this video project and stay safe. And hopefully I'll see you at least online very soon.